Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to part three of our series, The House of Isaac, House of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the Twelve Sons, and the House of Yahusha and Yahuwah. This video is the House of Jacob and the Twelve Sons. And we're gonna prove in scriptures that there was one law for us and one law for them and that yes they too had to come underneath the covenant whether they was living with us in our land or whether they were strangers outside of our land but follow the most high we're going to see through scriptures that even king solomon prayed for the stranger whether near or far that he would that the most high would hear their prayer so Brothers and sisters, let's get right to it. But first, I want to ask you a question. Would you prefer that a heathen or a Gentile <clears throat> come live in your land or hired to do a job in your land and not respect your law, statutes, and commandments? You can't do that anyway. You can't go to any country and disrespect their laws, statutes, and commandments of the land. It ain't happening. You'll get locked up, thrown underneath the bus. Nothing will go well for you in their lands if you don't know their laws and obey their laws, right? Same with us in our land. Anyone coming into our land must obey the laws of the land, the laws, statutes, and commandments, whether they coming in freely to live amongst us and worship the Most High, or whether they're coming in as a servant brought by money to work for our children, for us and our children forever, or whether they come in in captivity and come work in our land and be heroes of wood, drawers of water, or whether they're near or far just outside of a land or far away from a land. The same law applies to you and us, brothers and sisters, because I'm sure you wouldn't want to hire a maid in your house and she's dressed like she fits to go out for the night and, and stand on a corner and see how much money she can make. I'm pretty sure wives, you wouldn't want that your husband to be seeing that all the time. You wouldn't want them to wake up and start cleaning your homes and in your gardens, picking and whatever else they're doing in Daisy Dukes. Talking about, hey, Miss Parker. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want the ways of Babylon to come with you in your land, right? Why would the Most High want the same thing for you? The Most High said, rejoice in what I gave you, Zion. He gave you an inheritance, which is your brothers who are of the other nations. And when he did that, the same requirements he required us to follow, he required them to follow. And as we discovered in the last part, when we went to... Um, in um, this, the second part of Abraham's household, one and a, part one and a half, in Acts, even Peter and Paul and them knew this. So they said, hey, let's just start them off with the milk of the word. These few little things are enough. Don't put all that weight on them. They, they're babes. They can't handle all that meat. That's what the, the, the Hebrews was trying to do in that area telling them all this and that and the other oh you got to follow this that, and the other putting a heavy burden upon no you start them off slow with milk let them digest that and get used to that and then keep filling a cup every year till they are full vessel well grown up and in the word that's what that chapter acts chapter 15 was about give them milk and, and they have moses being preached in those synagogues in those areas every sabbath it says that plain and simple men make it hard because they twist your mind with lies and deceptions. So you got to put away those lies and deceptions and, 
and put on the truth. Sometimes that is difficult, brothers and sisters. So we got to bear with one another and bear each other's burdens, whether they come on, come at you cursing and putting you down, calling you names and saying you don't know nothing, all these other things. Let them say that's That's fine. If I got to take that heat for my brother to be saved later on, when he, re- he when he realized who he going against, it ain't me he going against. Let me take the heat. It's all right. It's all right. Throw them stones at me. If you are saved, it's worth it. One, if one soul is saved, then in the multitude of sins hidden, the angels in heaven sing. One more soul is gathered unto the kingdom, y'all. That's our job, Zion. You are the head of every household out here. You're the head over your brethren. Your father left you as the firstborn in charge over the children in the house. He gave you the law such commandments because you're the oldest. And he said, now I want you to take care of the house while I'm gone. And he left. And now you're the oldest one in the house. You, you're in charge. You got to keep them in line. Because your parent left and left you in charge. And he laid down the rules to you. And you would have laid down the rules to the other children and made sure that they follow it in that household. That's your position. Zion, it's really that simple. The same as in your own household when you give you put your oldest child in charge over there, the younger sisters, brothers and sisters. It's the same story. It's the same story. And the ones that don't want to obey, there is nothing to him. They're the ones that are spittle. But he gonna deal with them. That's his job. He gonna deal with the ones that don't want to obey. Your job is to find the ones that do. And that's your focus, to focus on good. Focus on the good. All around you. In your actions, in your life. And we are to teach them. You're the head, Zion. Be that which you are. And obey what the most I say here. This is Leviticus chapter 24 and 22. You shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger. That's your brothers. That's the younger brothers right there. You're the firstborn, you 12 tribes. You're over the house of Yasharal. The father going to come to you because he ain't dealt so with another nation. He's going to come to you as the firstborn and give you the law, such commandments, his oracles, his laws. And you're going to rule over the nations with these these laws. You're going to rule over your brother because he gave them to you to rule over. Same as in your households right now. You shall have one man or law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country. You will treat them as though they were born, one born in the land. For I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. It's real simple. Brothers and sisters, this is Ezekiel chapter 14, 6 through 8. Therefore say unto the house of Yasharal, Therefore say unto the firstborn, You're the keeper of my house, firstborn. I'm giving you the laws, and you need to teach your brethren. Thus say of Yahweh, Elohim, repent and turn yourselves from your idols. And turn away your faces from all your abominations. You can make men the idol real fast and believe their doctrine. Like the Gentiles can be saved. All of a sudden, that man just became your idol. And you're worshiping him as an idol. Or that woman who told that to you. Because you're no longer believing the Father. This is how easy it is to slip into idolizing people. I've done it. I had to repent of that. Father had to take me down from subscribing from other people and then turning them into idols because they was saying, spitting doctrines in my ears that weren't true. When he woke me up and made me understand, that ain't, you know, that ain't true what you're listening to over there. 
check this out, you know, and they showed me the truth. I had to repent of my adultery. I was idolizing. Yes, it's that simple. One piece of doctrine could turn you from the most high. And turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Yasharal or of the stranger that liveth in Yasharal, which separated himself from me, and set up his idols in his heart, and put up the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and come unto a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, Yahweh, will answer him by myself. Here it is, if you should see, not only the twelve tribes can be underneath them curses, but the stranger as well. And I will set my face against that man, and I will make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And you shall know that I am Yahweh. That's right. The ones within our midst can have the curses of Deuteronomy 28 put upon them as well. Who diso who know the truth and turn on it and disobey the Father. He says he will make you a sign in the proverb. He's not discriminating of our household, Zion. The same he would do for you, he would do for the rest in your house if they turn from him. And we know that he's going to put them curses on the the other ones who, who wasn't believing of the other nations, he's going to throw them curses on them. Especially when they discover the truth. The curse is going to be on them, y'all. So don't think that only the ones outside of Zion can experience the curses that we felt. The ones inside our own houses can do the same as we read right here in Ezekiel 14, 6-8. So with that understanding, let's get started with Jacob in Genesis chapter 27. Now that we understand Abraham's household, Isaac's household, we're going to under, truly understand Jacob's household and the blessings that passed from, that was given to Abraham first, passed to his seed Isaac. Then from Isaac, it passed to his seed Jacob. And they are head of their own houses. Masters of the houses. Over the rest of the ones that's a part of that house. And we see right here. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come now, come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of, the, of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which... Yahweh have blessed and we know that he went into there look feeling like Esau and smelling like Esau so that he can get the blessing therefore Yah give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee be masters over thy brethren the father left the house and looked at the firstborn and pointed his finger. Y'all know that finger. You in charge. You know that, that look too. Father or mother leave that house. Look, give you that look. That means you better follow my laws, statutes, commandments. You, you follow the laws of my house. You're in charge. Be master over your brethren. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. So if if the Gentiles want to, whether they're in your house or outside of it, want to curse you, they will be cursed. And if they want to bless you, they will be, be blessed. They will be blessed. Because they're partaking in the covenant promises given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the blessings flow from them through the whole house. So he's always going to go back to the head. Throughout all the scriptures, you're going to hear Jacob's name and Yahshua. You're going to think it's just talking to them. And now it is talking to them now. 
but it's also talking through them to their households. And that's why we have to cover this, brothers and sisters, once and for all. And every time you read the scriptures, you're going to have a whole understanding. You're going to see the fullness of grace and mercy and long suffering of the Most High in every story of the scriptures. You're going to see the same setting. Proselytes converting being a part of us. Men and women just being captured, coming, to, you know, but we, us bringing them into our, into the bond of the covenant that way. Or us buying and trading things for them. Or being gifted to us. But they all have to follow one law. Hallelujah. Let's go to um, Genesis 30 and 43. Genesis 30 and 43. Oh, I passed it on. Here we go. Now we're focusing on all the maid servants and men servants of Jacob. When Jacob went to Laban's, he met. Rachel and he fell in love and he wanted to marry her. So he had to serve Laban for seven years for her hand and he did and he was tricked by Laban when Laban brought Laban to marry him instead and he found out in the morning he was married to Lay now. <laughs> then he said you tricked me and then he went and uh Laban said, well, serve me seven years more for Rachel, because I had to marry the firstborn first, then her. And he said, okay, I can accept that. And, you know, he went ahead and married Rachel, and he served Laban seven years more for her after that. And he begot children, 11 sons from Le, Rachel, Bilhah. Zilpa and uh, he waxed strong in the Laban's land and the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and donkeys of his household and believe me, they wasn't walking around all tricked out, cursing and being all foul mouth, catching, you know, animals, you know, the, uh, things crawling in the trees and eating them and frying them up in your face, slaughtering hogs all up in your household. No, they weren't doing all that with Jacob. They're servants. And anyone free that was given to the household or became a part of the household they still served Jacob but they was underneath the bond of the covenant as well let's go to uh, uh, Jasher the book of Jasher chapter 31 Now, we're just going to back up the story, right? That we just got out of Genesis. And it's going to expound on just a little bit more. Uh, let's read. This is Jasher 31, 31 through 33. Oh, also I wanted to uh, cover this part here. And Deborah remained with Jacob in Haran. Now, Isaac and Rebekah was... Wondering, what, what's going on with Jacob? Let's send some, some of our servants to go see what's going on and, and tell them to return home to the land of Canaan. And when um, they saw that Jacob wasn't ready to leave just yet, the servants of Isaac left and went back to the land of Canaan. But Deborah remained with Jacob in Haran. Remember, Deborah was Rebekah's maid servant and when she went she remained with Jacob and Iran and she did not return with the servants of Isaac to the land of Canaan 
And Deborah resided with Jacob's wives and children in Haran. She stayed a part of that household. She died. She was buried. Um, let's see. Who was she buried by, beside? I think she's buried bes beside uh, Rach. Uh, um, I can't remember who she. I think she's by, buried by Dinah or or Ra Rachel. One of them can't exactly remember right now but anyway she stayed a part of the jacob's jacob's household and we're going to find two more of of isaac's servants uh who's who joined themselves unto jacob's household and stayed with him uh in just a moment but let's read right here and Jacob served Laban six years longer, and when the sheep brought forth, Jacob removed from, from them which were uh, speckled and spotted, as he had determined with Laban. And Jacob did so at Laban's for six years, and the man increased abundantly. And he had cattle and maid servants and men servants, camels and donkeys, and Jacob had two hundred drove of cattle. And his cattle were of large size and of a beautiful appearance, and were very productive and all the families of the sons of men desired to come to get some of the cattle of jacob for they were exceedingly prosperous and many of the sons of men came to procure some of jacob's flocks they came to buy his flocks y'all see this y'all see the most high blessing jacob and the blessings overflowing to the other nations even laban was blessed Remember Abraham was supposed to be a blessing to all nations? Abraham was at his time. He was a blessing to all nations all around him. Isaac's household, Isaac was a blessing to all the nations. Remember he dug those water wells and he gave, you know, when when he had a fight with the, uh, not a fight, but argument with the Philistines of the land. And he, he gave them those wells. He blessed them with those wells. Rather than go to war, he gave it to them. And he kept digging wells and they kept taking them until finally they didn't take that last well. And he was satisfied. He made, he was at peace with that. Though that he dug the wells, he gave it up. And he blessed them instead of cursing them, right? Not that the Most High didn't get them for that. <laughs> but anyway, blessings overflowed from Jacob to Laban. And they came to him as he blessed others. So they came to buy Jacob's flock. And Jacob gave them a sheep for a manservant or a maidservant. Or for a donkey, camel, or whatsoever Jacob desired from them. They gave him. And Jacob obtained riches and honor and possessions by means of these transactions with the sons of men. And the children of Laban envied him of this honor. They hated him. So right away before Isaac died, Jacob's household was already great, a great household before he came back home to, to the land of Canaan, filled with Man, man servants and maid servants and they served his household and they had great positions in the household brothers and sisters don't forget that they were put in places over our own children our people and let me show you that down here in verse 70 let's drop in 71 and then we're going to go into Joshua chapter 32 this is chapter 31, Joshua chapter 31 and 71. And Rebecca hastened. Now, wait a minute. Let me go back up here. Isaac and Rebecca heard that Esau had departed to come meet Jacob in the road. Because Laban's messengers told Esau, how evil Jacob entreated him. Of course, y'all know he was lying. But Esau, in his wrath, remembered 
that he wanted to kill Jacob. And so he gathered 400 people and he was coming to meet him. And Rebekah found out. And Rebekah hastened and sent 72 men from the servants of Isaac to meet Jacob on the road. For she said, peradventure, Esau may make war in the road when he meets him. So she sent these servants to meet them. Now you're going to see who they was, who these servants was. And these servants joined themselves to Jacob as well. Uh, let's see, where is it? Right here. And Jacob ceased praying. Now he was greatly afraid of um, Esau. And so he was praying for him and his family and everybody in his house, in his camp, right? And um, the servants of Isaac, well, Isaac's household met him, you know, was part of that company now. Now, let's check this out. And Jacob ceased praying to Yahweh. And he divided the people that were with him, with the flocks and cattle, into two camps. And he gave the half to the care of Demesek, the son of Eleazar, Abraham's servant for a camp with his children and the other half he gave to the care of his brother Elianus the son of Eleazar to be for a camp with his children these two sons these two sons of Eleazar who was Abraham's servant was a part of Isaac's household they was part of Abraham's then it became part of Isaac's and now they're with Jacob. And they stayed with him after they went through their thing with um, Esau. They stayed with him. Because um, when Jacob went back into the land, he stayed at the border. Right here it says, uh, And Esau said unto Jacob, I will place with thee. Now, Jacob gave Esau gifts from his flocks, from his cattle, gold and silver. He gave him much gifts. And Esau wanted Jacob to come back with him to his land. And Jacob said, Well, you go ahead. You go first and we'll follow. But then he turned and he went to the land of Canaan. <laughs> and Esau said unto Jacob, I will place with thee some of the people that are with me to take care of thee in the road and to bear thy fatigue and burden. And he said, what need of it, my master? He talking to Esau. If I may find grace in thy sight, behold, I will come unto thee to Sire to dwell there together as thou hast spoken go thou then with thy people for i will follow thee and jacob said this to esau in order to remove esau and his men from him so that jacob might afterward go to his father's house to the land of canaan <laughs> and esau hearkened to the voice of jacob and esau returned with the 400 men that were with him on the road to sire and jacob and all belonging to him went uh, that day, as far as the extremity of the land of Canaan, in its borders. And he remained there some time. So, uh, those servants that was with them remained with them, y'all. They was right there on the borders. And we're going to see um, them fits to get, in, get into it with the men of Shechem. Now, y'all read this here. Uh, where um, the men of Shechem took Dinah. Took her. And he, he did something foul and defiled her. And of course, Jacob well, uh, Simeon and Levi got revenge on that city and they tore that city apart. 
but they took captives afterwards and that's our focus is the captives they took out of Shechem before they went into the land of Goshen but before we go there let's go back here to Genesis scroll down to 32 verse 5 and 6 uh, this is when he's, uh, Jacob told his servants to go ahead and, and talk with Esau for him and tell him what was going on or what really happened when he was at Laban's and uh, he told him what he, he acquired while he was there and thus shall you speak unto my master Esau Thy servant Jacob said thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now, and I have oxen and donkeys, flocks, and men servants and women servants, and I have sent to tell my master that I may find grace in thy sight. But we're just focusing on the men servants and the women servants, brothers and sisters. Now let's get back to the book of Jasher. And let's scroll down to 34. We're mostly focusing on the servants that was begot, you know, gained out of all this. 34. Let's keep going till we get to 36. 35. Right here it says, And the number of women whom Simeon and Levi took captives from the city of Shechem, whom they did not slay, was 85, who had not known man. So they took all the women virgins. And amongst them was a young damsel of beautiful appearance and well favored, whose name was Buna. And Simeon took her for a wife. And the number of the males which they took captives and did not slay was 47 men and the rest they slew and all the young men and women that Simeon and Levi had taken captives from the city of Shechem were servants to the sons of Jacob and to the children after them and to their children after them you hear that to the sons of Jacob and to their children after them until the day the sons of Jacob going forth from the land of Mizraim. Didn't I tell you they had servants in the land of Goshen when they was free and when they was born? These servants, plus the servants of Laban, plus some that he got from Isaac, went into the land with Jacob and the sons, sojourning in the land of Goshen, and when they went forth, they came out with us until the day the sons of Jacob went out of the land of Mizraim. They bear witness with us, the mighty hand of the Most High, breaking the back of Egypt. But then there was another multitude of free, the free ones, who believed and they came out with us. Brothers and sisters, the mixed multitude. Let's go there real quickly. Exodus. Okay, right here. Exodus twelve thirty seven says, And the children of Yasharah journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men, besides children. And a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes. Well, you know, they was doing the Passover here and doing the Feast of Unleavened Bread at this time, all of them together. And the sojourning of the children of Yasharal, who dwelt in Mizraim, was 430 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, it came to pass that all the host of Yahweh went out from the land of Mizraim. Who is all the host?
it's the whole house. But what is the whole house? What's the house of Yasharal that came out? It's both us and Gentiles that always existed from Abraham's household to Jacob's before covenants were even made. So we are proven all things here. From that video I put out, important update. When I spoke about that, these houses, now you're seeing the scriptures. Now you're seeing the, the big picture. The, you're seeing the grace and the mercy in the house of the Most High unfold before your eyes. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Joshua. And let's go to 37, brothers and sisters. Y'all see this? You are the head. You're the head Zion of the house of Yasharal. So now you can understand how Mashiach, I have not come but to save the lost sheep of the house of Yasharal. You're going to know what that means. And you're not going to be one line by anyone ever again. Because you're going to see the fullness of all the houses. And he never changes. The household never changed. Men change. The Most High never changes. It's men. Jasher 37. Uh, I think I missed. Did I miss something? Okay, I did miss something. Uh, right here after they destroyed Sechem the other kings around that area came to war with them and when Isaac found out he sent all his servants to Jacob and all the servants of Isaac who were with Isaac and Hebron all came to them equipped in all sorts of war instruments. And the sons of Jacob and their servants and their servants being 112 men went towards these kings. And Jacob also went with them. We're focused on the servants. You see the High not only empowered the sons of Jacob with strength. He empowered the servants as well, brothers and sisters. The same with Abraham and his servants. The father empowered him and the servants to defeat those kings and rescue Lot. And we always had servants in our household. King Saul had an Amalekite of Esau, an Edomite, a part of his army. He was the one who, uh, whom King Saul told him to uh, kill, kill, kill him. And that Amalekite obeyed and, and stabbed King Saul. And then King David had that Edomite put to death because he wasn't afraid to kill the Most High's anointed king. And he got put to death. But what I'm saying is we've always had Gentiles a part of our household in great positions as well. Just as King David had Uriah the Hittite whom he sent on the front line so he can be with uh, Bathsheba. He sent him on the front line to get killed, but he was a captain over men, men of Zion as well. He was a warrior. This this other side of the story that's in the scriptures that need to be put together with everything and be told so that you can understand this is the Most High's narrative, not no Roman church. No Roman Christian church. 
This is the Most High's narrative. He the one who made this from the jump with Abraham's household and before that. They just took our narrative and twisted it, brothers and sisters. That's all. So you got a lot of brews on here that just gonna, they're gonna persecute you for this, this truth because they, they don't believe the Most High. They don't believe him. You can show them all day long what these scriptures say. They, they gonna, their eyes gonna look right over it and they gonna blaspheme the Most High and curse you. Then they gonna be cursed because the Most High is blessing you and Whoever um, curse you, he going to curse, whether they of Zion or of a, a one of another nation. He will honor his word, and he has no respect of person, brothers and sisters. So, just remember that there was plenty of people with us, and we, we're going to take a look at Judith and the one that was in our household. Who was over all her house. But first. Uh, let's continue on. And go to. Where. Let's see. Where was I? 37. Did I cover this already? Okay. Here we go. Jasher 37, 12, and 13. We're focusing on not only the sons of Jacob, but who was with them and who else was empowered. Right here it says, And the sons of Jacob heard this, and their anger was kindled exceedingly at the words of the kings of Canaan. And, the, and ten of the sons of Jacob hastened and rose up. Joseph was too young at this time. And Benjamin wasn't born yet. And each of them girt on his weapons of war. And there were 102 of their servants with them equipped in battle array. And all these men, the sons of Jacob, with their servants, went toward these kings. And Jacob, their father, was with them. And they all stood upon the heap of sheep, Chem. And Jacob prayed, y'all. Who did he pray for? He sat there praying for his sons. And who else? While he's praying, he's saying, And give unto my sons, thy servants, strength of heart and might to fight with their enemies, to subdue them and make their enemies fall before them. And let not my sons and their servants die through the hands of the children of Canaan. Can you see the whole house of Yasharon now? Can you see it? Let's go to um, uh, let's see um, let's go to First Kings Uh, no, no, Let, let's just drop down to, we're going to build a, we're we going to go to First Kings after Jasher 86. Now, this is after the children of Yashara came out of the land of Mizuyam with the free and bond. Men servants and maid servants. After we came out with them, we encountered the Midianites. And here's what happened. Now remember our focus is on this on Jacob's household and his servants. That was a part of those households. And it was after this that Yahweh said to Moses, Say unto the children of Yashara to avenge upon Midian the cause of their brethren, the children of Yashara, and Moses did so. And the children of Yashara chose from amongst them 12,000 men, being 1,000 to a tribe. And they went to Midian, and the children of Yashara warred against Midian. And they slew every male. Also the five princes of Midian and Balaam, the son of Beor, did they slay with the sword. 
And the children of Yasharal took the wives of Median captive with the little ones and their cattle and all belonging to them. And they took all the spoil and all the prey and they brought it to Moses and to Eliezer to the plains of Moab. And Moses and Eliezer and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them with joy. And they divided all the spoil of Median, and the children of Yasharal had been revenged upon Median for the cause of their brethren, the children of Yasharal. Remember I told y'all, whether we brought them in by captives, whether they were brought with money, whether they were traded and became a part of a household, or whether they came in freely by converting and just believing by faith alone. As y'all know in the story with Ruth. Her faith. And she left her people. She said, I ain't, uh -uh, I ain't going with them heathens. I'm coming with you, Naomi. And I'm going to serve you and your household and, and your most high. And she was accepted. And she obeyed the, and walked in the ways of the Most High. And Boaz took her for a wife. And Boaz had obeyed and obeyed at Jesse. And Jesse had King David. That don't mean just go out there and start marrying another nation, Zion. <laughs> you still supposed to marry within your own ranks. But he made provisions uh, if you did marry um, a Edomite or something. Uh, that uh, they would come into the congregation of the third generation or an Egyptian or something like that. He made provisions concerning those things because he knew our stiff-neckedness and he had mercy on us. But anyway, we see more servants added to our house on the other side of Jordan Let's go down to 88. We're going to see what happened on the other side of Jordan. When we made it to the other side of Jordan. Where the Most High still the waters of the Jordan. You know. And we crossed over. We're going to Jasher 88. What is this? Oh, too far. Jasher 88. 49 through. Um. Uh, 54. It says right here. Uh, let's see. Is this yeah. And all the kings on this side, Jordan, all the kings of Canaan, heard of the evil which the children of Yasharal had done to Jericho and to Ai. And they gathered themselves together to fight against Yasharal. Only the inhabitants of Gibeon were greatly afraid of fighting against the Yashualites, lest they should perish. So they acted cunningly, and they came to Joshua and to all Yasharal and said unto them, We have come from a distant land. Now therefore make a covenant with us. And the inhabitants of Gibeon overreached the children of Yasharal, and the children of Yasharal made a covenant with them, and they made peace with them. And the princes of the congregation swore unto them, but afterward the children of Yasharal knew that they were neighbors to them and were dwelling amongst them. So the gig was up. They found out, wait a minute, they, they're neighbors. They're not from far. But it was too late. Why? But the children of Yasharal slew them not, for they had sworn to them by Yahuwah. And they became heroes of wood and drawers of water. So they couldn't slay them. They already made a covenant with peace by the name of the Most High. So they made these Canaanites of Gibeon hewers of wood and drawers of water. And therefore our house increased with more servants. Brothers and sisters. So let's go to... Did I already go to First Corinthians? I mean, First, what, what, uh, 
King Solomon. I think I did. But you know what? It wouldn't hurt to go again if I didn't go. This is 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 41. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Yasharal, but cometh out of a far country for their name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm. When he shall come and pray toward this house, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth thee calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do thy people Yahshuaah and that they may know that this house which I have built is called by thy name so King Solomon prayed for Yahshuaah first and then he prayed for the strangers living amongst us or even in a far country brothers and sisters near or far Let's go here to Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 25. And all the congregation of Yehuda, with the priests and the Levites, and all the congregation that came out of Yasharal, and the strangers that came out of the land of Yasharal, and that dwelt in Judah, rejoiced. So this is the time when King Hezekiah king of Judah was celebrating the feast of unleavened bread for seven days and the northern kingdom came and joined, joined them and the strangers that was amongst the northern kingdom and whoever dwelt in Judah the southern kingdom It was a great celebration, brothers and sisters, but it did include the stranger, one who was from another nation, joined onto our households or coming from afar, brothers and sisters. Now let's go to Esdras. Right here in First Esdras, not second Esdras, but first Esdras, chapter two. Cyrus, king of the Persians, was given commandment by the Most High to rebuild the temple. So he um, went to the to the elders of our people and, and commanded them to gather gather souls together to go build the temple in obedience to the word of the Most High. And um, he gave them um, gold and silver and gifts and horses and gave them every, you know, everything you need to build this temple. But there were other people in Judah as well. Let's start right here. Then the chief of the families of Judah and of the tribe of Benjamin stood up the priest also and the Levites and all they whose spirit Yahweh had stirred to go up to build the house of Yahweh which is in Jerusalem and they that dwelt round about round about them helped them in all things with silver and gold so right here there was people still on the land round about Jerusalem that helped them with silver, gold, with horses and cattle, including other nations that um, gave timber and cedar wood and gold and silver to the building of the temple. And with very many gifts that were vowed of a great number whose minds were stirred up there too brothers and sisters and uh, let's go to Judith and check out some things there and again we are proving that we indeed have handmaids and servants from the time of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and the twelve sons 
Whether we were free or bond, we had handmaids and servants with us. This is uh, Judith, chapter 4, verse 6. And Joachim, the high priest, which was in those days at Jerusalem, we didn't have a king at this time. He was uh, the ruler over us. Plus, there, there was a governor as well which was in those days at Jerusalem, wrote to them that dwelt in Bethaliah and Betamestham, which is over against Esdraelon, toward the plain that is nigh unto Dotham, charging them to seize upon the ascents of the hill country, because by them was the entrance into Judea, and it was easy to stop them from approaching inasmuch as the approach was narrow with space for two men at the at the most and the children of Yashara did as Joachim the high priest had commanded them and the senate of all the people of Yashara which dwelt at Jerusalem and every man of Yashara cried to Yahweh with great earnestness and with great earnestness did they humble their souls they and their wives and their babes and their cattle and every sojourner and hireling and servant bought with their money put sackcloth on upon their loins and every man and woman of Yasharal and the little children and inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the temple and cast ashes upon their heads and spread out their sackcloth before Yahweh can you see this? At that time, our servants and our handmaids was down with us. They put sackcloth and ashes on them as well. Because it says every sojourner, those who are living amongst us, the hireling that we hired and the servant that was serving in our house bought with, their, with, with our money they put on sackcloth upon their loins right along with us Zion proving therefore even more what I said whether we are free or bond underneath the hand of another nation or underneath the hand of our kings all who are part of Yasharab fall underneath the covenant and whether we are free or bond, we have we we have handmaids and servants with us during those captivities. Even now, you're in the land of your captivity, and you could go hire a servant. You can you can have a, a handmaid if if you got enough money to uh, to take care of that servant. You can buy them permanently and say, "Hey, I want you to come be a part of my family." Or you could pay them to come over three times a week as a hireling. And when they come to your house, they have to respect the rules of your house. When they come to your house, they can't bring over pork sandwiches and be dressed like, um, like they're going to the club or something. You know what I mean? Now, we're, we're in their land now. They can do what they want outside of our households and our property. But on our property and in our households, we need to rule it with the iron rod. <laughs> with the rod of the law, such as commandments, brothers and sisters. Whether they're hireling or serving in your house or living, come, just came to live with you for a little while. They still have to be under the law of the house, right? You ain't going to let them run buck wild and do what they want and influence your own sons and daughters to do wickedly. They're going to be like, wait, my, well, he, 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 my dad and mom letting them do that and I can do it too. After a while, you're going to think it's cool to do that. And you're going to fall right in step with that sojourner or hireling or servant that's in your house. Unless they fall underneath the house rules. 
Y'all hear me? Y'all getting it? Hallelujah. One last place. No, two more two more places. We're gonna look at Judith. And that's it. We're gonna we're gonna conclude this series. Judith chapter eight. We're just gonna look at Judith number one, sending her servant, who is head of her household, to go call the elders so she can talk with them, and then that same servant goes with her to cut off the head of the beast. Okay, this is Judith chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. And she was of a goodly countenance and exceeding beautiful to behold, and her husband Manasseh had left her gold and silver and men servants and maid servants and cattle and lands, and she remained upon them. And there was none that gave her an evil word, for she feared Yahweh exceedingly, brothers and sisters. So, yes, she had men, servants, and maid servants while we were underneath Babylon, the Medes and the Persians, and all the other captivities we were, you know, we were under without a king. Now, when when the rulers heard that uh, the king was going to send an army to destroy Judah for not obeying the, the king's commandment, they were in fear, shaking them in, in their boots. And Judah heard all the evil words. Well, she heard all the words that Uzziah spake unto them how he swear to them that he would deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days. And she sent her maid. Well, I said Babylon, I meant the Assyrians. That was over all things that she had. This part I want. Oh, that highlight ain't working. Let me read that again. And she sent her maid that was over all things that she had to call Ozias and Chalbers and Charmus and the elders of her city. And they came unto her and she said unto them, well, anyway, we don't need to get into this conversation right here. But as you can see, this maid had a great position in her household. She was over all the house. Brothers and sisters, let's jump down to verse chapter 10, Judith 10, and went a little bit too far, and these are the last two verses, 5 and 10, we're just going to bear witness that she took her maid with her, and she gave her maid a leather bottle of wine, now this is when she on her way to go Chop off the head of that general. And she gave her maid a leather bottle of wine and a cruise of oil and filled a bag with parched corn and lumps of figs and fine bread. And she packed all her vessels together and laid them upon her. And they went forth to the gate of the city of Bethulia and found standing there by Ozias. Now they eventually open up the gate and let them out. And Judith went out, she and her handmaid with her. We always had Gentiles tied to our house, Zion. From Abraham's house to Isaac's house to Jacob's house to the twelve sons' house and their sons after them, even in the captivities of Mizraim, Babylon, Medes and Persians, Greeks and Romans. Even during the time of Hamashiach, we had us we still had our servants and handmaids in our households. Following the law, statutes and commandments. 
even scattered abroad. Not, if, not as if the word of the Most High has not taken none effect. It has taken effect. It didn't go. It didn't go out void from Zion. You're gonna see when we return, all the nations gathered unto us. Some of them going in captivity and chains. Some of them coming into our households to be servants. Some of them going to join themselves to us freely and going to be underneath our hand. Like you're free in this land. And you're not free, but you're underneath the governor of this land. But you got freedom to, to buy and sell and to sue and to, to, to move about, to visit other countries if you want to. If you follow their rules, of course, you need a visa and all that other stuff to travel, right? You go buy those things and you, you're free to travel. You can go to Africa and visit for a while and come back home. But we still got our other brothers and sisters over there under bondage, right? They're getting taken still and being brought to other, other nations and sold. Free and bond. This same free and bond story that we see with us. Whether we're in our land, outside of our land, it's with them as well. Whether they're in our land or outside of our land. And the same curses that the father said he would put on us, he put on them too. Because they knew it's coming and they was following and he not a respect of person, so he would punish, he would deal with them himself, he said. Chastise them and bring them back into the bond of the covenant. So you, you not only have the ancestors of our people, of the 12 tribes, but those who were with us. Who went, a, went astray. These same ones of those children are waking up with us. They've been prepared to be a part of our household again and come on in to serve the Most High in righteousness and holiness. In our land and outside of our land, the, the, you know, Mizraim being prepared to be joined on to us and Syria is fenced to be joined on to us. We're going to be the third in the middle, as prophecy said. There'll be a highway from Mizraim to, um, Assyria, to, to Syria and we'll be the third in the middle. They're going to be joined on to us. Though they're going to be underneath our hand, they're still going to serve us as we are the oldest, we're the brother. You know, they're going to have to hear what thus say of the Most High through our lips, right? And we're going to rule over them, brothers and sisters. So with that, I'm going to say Shalom. I got part four. It's going to be coming out soon. Y'all wait for it. If it's not out already. We're going to be dealing with the house of Yahusha and the house of Yahuwah. Thank y'all for tuning in. And I'm going to say Shalom.